mark the opening of Major League Baseball's international signing period. And if that doesn't excite you at all, there's a reason for it. Good morning to you. Good. Tuesday morning, I'm Dan Kovacevic with DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins in the same place that you found this. The Pirates have reached agreement with two international prospects. I'm going to read you their names. It's not like they would mean anything to anybody. These are 16-year-olds who signed just so young. One of them is an outfielder named Braulene Brazoban. He was the number 38 overall international prospect. Another one is a shortstop named Abdiel Feliz. He's the number 50 overall prospect. The Pirates are going to have a total of $7 million in pool money available when it comes to completing this class. And they have several months to do it. They're expected to release more of these names later in the week. Now, why does this not matter? The answer to that is something that really probably should get more attention than it has. This is, remember, the franchise of Roberto Clemente. This is the franchise that pioneered going into Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, Panama, with great players like Manny Sanguian, Omar Marino, and Rennie Stennett. And they have become, wow, I, I, I don't even know how to put this, but Junior Vizcaino, who took over as Latin American scouting director, replacing Rene Gallo, he took his position in late 2017, December to be specific. And in all that time, one, count him, one of his players has made it to Pittsburgh. And that would be Luis Ortiz, who, of course, has taken more than one backward step along the way, including most recently. That's it. One. You want me to say it again? <laughs> it's unbelievable. Now, you can say, as I just did earlier, well, they're 16-year-olds, they're 18-year-olds, whatever. But at some point or other, you got to come through with somebody who at least has some potential. And wait, this gets worse. In going through the current minor league system, Right now, they have exactly two of the organization's top 25 prospects. That's it. Just two. Going to read you their names, too. A shortstop named Jordani De Los Santos. He's in A-ball. He was a $1.2 million bonus signing. He is considered to be the 16th best player in the system. Another is outfielder Shailene Polanco. No relation to Gregory. He's also in A ball. He cost $2.35 million as a bonus. And he's the 21st ranked player. And that, that's it, 21st. They have the 16th and the 21st prospects in a system that now is no longer even regarded as all that good. And if it didn't have Paul Skeens, it would really be falling off. <sighs> Guys, I, listen, I know that there are sexier subjects than this, okay? When you're talking about, you know, a, a controversial decision that happens in a game, Derek Shelton pulling a guy too soon, uh, even the way the lineup is constructed, you're going to get more of a rise out of people than you are talking about something like this. But this is what makes or breaks your organization, this is it. This is really it. If you produce one Starling Marte the way Gaio did, or a lot of the other players that he had along the way, you make a massive difference. And when you're talking about expenditures and you're talking about an organization like the Pirates that's notoriously cheap, at least when it comes to Major League Payroll, they max out on this stuff. They spend all kinds of money. This $7 million that we're talking about here, they're going to spend all $7 million of it. If they went and got a $7 million hitter right now, everyone would go, wow, that's awesome. This is great. They do it on this, and they have nothing to show for it. Why? Why? I, I, I don't have the answers to that, but my goodness, you'd think that'd be more of a question. When we come back, J1Q. 
This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800 degree stone and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Your front door, your car, your bike, your computer, your gun. Safety is a habit. Every day you lock and secure your home and everything you want to keep safe. Gun safety and responsible storage are no different and the best way to help prevent accidents, misuse, and theft. If you have a firearm, own it, respect it, and secure it. Visit projectchildsafe.org. Brought to you by the National Shooting Sports Foundation and the Bureau of Justice Assistance. Today's J1Q comes from Anson, who says, DK, with all the injuries that the Pirates are dealing with, has this bought management a mulligan year? Anson, if I were the one distributing the mulligans, I'd have been all out of mulligans back before anyone had to look up what an actual mulligan is. Let's put it that way. It's year five, and I know you've actually heard Ben Charrington at times kind of tap dance away from the year five notion because there was COVID. And and that's legit to an extent. It hampered not only players' development, but also the perception of players' development. Meaning, for example, and he didn't say this, I am. Quinn Priester was one of the COVID stars at the Altoona Satellite Camp. Just to try to see if I can jog your memory a bit. And he rocketed up to number seven on the overall Major League Baseball prospects list, which now seems nuts, right? But he had a fastball. He was bringing heat. He had dynamic spin on his off-speed stuff, has a kind of a starting pitcher's body, all that stuff that scouts like. And, you know, he's not that. At least he isn't now. Here's hoping that he still can be. Now, that year, you can make a pretty nice argument in favor of a mulligan. A lot of things were thrown out of whack. You can even say that about the drafts. They had a very tough time. All teams did. Scouting for that first draft class. That said, on the calendar that most of us follow, this is, you know, it's year five. And we, us outsider types, are no longer the only ones saying, hey, this is it. Let's go. Step on the gas here. Come on. They are. And that's really, to me, the beginning and the end of any such discussion, meaning what you're bringing up here. They're saying it's the year where they should compete, contend. Actually, they're using contend even more than compete, whereas they would never use contend before. It was only compete. Anybody can compete. You can compete and lose 110. You can compete. They're saying contend. They're saying that they want to win a division. Derek Shelton had that come up at both Pirates Fest and at the winter meetings. Their aim is to win the division. He's not predicting it. He's saying that that's their aim. Again, never been said before. So they've set this bar for themselves. They've done this, Anson. You don't have to do it. I don't have to do it. They have. So try to picture whatever sort of word sleuthing would be necessary by, oh, I don't know, August or September if the Pirates are... 10, 15, 20 games below 500 or whatever it is. And they're the ones asking for a mulligan based on injuries. I'm not seeing that, especially when, and here comes the dirty little subject. They're at least partially responsible for their injuries. They're mostly responsible, I dare say, for Johan Oviedo having Tommy John surgery They're at least partly responsible for Andy Rodriguez having it. We could go through everybody who's had 
you know, their elbow opened up here over the past year and a half and try to, you know, do CSI cases on it or whatever. But that's also part of the job. You have a lot of people that you're paying money to make sure that your players are being taken care of and that they stay healthy. Nobody bats a thousand on that. But you also don't want to be the ones that are sending the longest lines to see Dr. Andrews. Really, my own answer is that I don't think they have anywhere to hide from it, but you never know. You never know. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Pirates, and we're going to do another one of these tomorrow. Tomorrow.